to say a few words on the methods and ideas employed to break up atoms. For those of you who watched the movie, there was a point where Oppenheimer and the other scientists were very concerned that setting off the atomic bomb would cause our Earth's atmosphere to turn into plasma, essentially causing us all to die, whatever, just some casual stuff. There's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world. Chances are near zero. And so there was, this was a major point of concern until some calculations were done that sort of minimized the concern and just proved that it wasn't really something to worry about. So this got my head turning. I was like, what were those calculations that made the, co the scientists so confident to continue forward when a minute ago they were worried that it would literally end us all? <laughs> so this is what this video is about. I'm going to dive deep into what I found on this and sort of explain the math behind it. Before we get into that, let's talk about the atomic history of the atomic bomb and everything that sort of led to this. So it takes us all the way back to 1739 when a German scientist Martin Klauperth, Klauperth discovered the, um, the element uranium. And it wasn't until Marie Curie's research in the late 19th century that we discovered that it was radioactive. And more importantly, we discovered this sort of general term of what radioactivity is. And that was also very interesting groundbreaking research, which ultimately sort of altered um, Ernest Rutherford's research in 1911 when he sort of came up with this atomic model of what the atom could potentially look like. So essentially he theorized that there was like this mass in the center and there was these elements that are sorry these electrons that orbited the mass and so that was kind of his hy hypothesis and this was also a fundamental progression in sort of the atomic history as well. In 1934, an Italian scientist was able to actually take the mask that um, Ernest Rutherford previously theorized about and he split it in an uranium atom which sort of led to this sort of nuclear energy and this new area of science that forever would change the change the world. <laughs> so that's sort of the history of the atomic bomb but that doesn't really explain what the atomic bomb is. So the atomic bomb essentially uses science that we call fission. Fission is actually very interesting. So essentially what happens is a neutron comes and it strikes the nucleus of an atom, specifically in the case of atomic bombs, a specific isotope, and there's two isotopes that are used. And once it hits the, uh, the, uh, the nucleus of the atom, what's going to happen is it's going to split apart. And as it splits apart, it releases two things. It releases energy and it also releases another neutron which will then go and do the same thing to another isotope. And this will cause a train of reaction, causing more and more and more and more and more and more energy to essentially be released. This was revolutionary because previously, when, you, when they actually hit other um, specific uh, elements, what happened was they would release energy, but it'd be a very, very tiny amount of energy, and it wouldn't be enough to actually create a bomb, like at all. <laughs> and also the uh, reaction in it itself was only a one-time situation. This was a self-sustaining reaction. It could happen over and over and over again because the product that was used to break the atom was also a byproduct of that reaction which would allow it to kind of happen again over and over and over. The specific isotopes that were used were uranium 235 and plutonium 239 and this is this is why research into uranium was so crucial everything from radioactivity to actually understanding the atomic structure of not only uranium but all atoms as a whole. It all played a crucial role in the, the creation of the atomic bomb. Okay, so that's all interesting, but why were the scientists even worried that it would cause the whole atmosphere to implode? The reason why they were so concerned was they thought that the energy from the actual release of the bomb would interfere and sort of transfer that energy to the specific uh, elements in our air, like nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen, and then cause those to also create the chain reaction and causing more and more in the sort of like ripple effect across the whole atmosphere. And although this was a point of concern for a while, they realized that these are relatively stable atoms, so they weren't really concerned. But another point of concern was sort of protons in the air and how those are typically less stable than, you know, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen. And so they really wanted to dive, di dive in and make sure that this wasn't a point of concern for, uh, like, for to actually happen. So to do the calculations, they wanted to do it so it was the worst case scenario, so that they were you know, preparing for 
what would happen if this got really, really, really bad? So everything in the calculation and in the theory behind the calculation was essentially saying, if this went terribly wrong, what would happen? And they wanted to ensure that even after after the worst case scenario, they were good to go. They were still good to release this um, bomb. So essentially what they came up with was if the energy in the specific area that the bomb went off was greater than the energy lost, then that would mean that our Earth's atmosphere would um, essentially turn into plasma and we would all die. Okay, so essentially what they did here is they took the partial of energy with respect to the partial of time, which is essentially just a rate of change of the energy um, produced over this period of time, and they took in different variables, including the atomic density of um, nitrogen and then the energy per reaction. And then they also take this probability of fission, and this is sort of the, um, the average as we see with the bar here. And in order to calculate this, we need to use something called the back maxwell boltman plot, which essentially maps the kinetic energy to another variable over a given period of time. So we're essentially calculating the area under this curve so for this we have the partial of energy with respect to the partial of time again a rate of change and it's negative because we're looking at the energy lost here and this takes it a lot more uh, different variables but we're just going to focus on a few important ones so n still represents the atomic density of nitrogen again or the specific element that we're looking at and then z is the actual atomic number of the element we're looking at and then e is obviously the energy released um, and this really again depends on the charge of the ions and then v is velocity and so they wanted to essentially model this so what they did was they actually created the sort of um, change in energy and sort of looked at the rate of change for the actual energy being lost and the energy actually being created from the bomb. And so after they were able to do that, they essentially took those equations and they created graphs of sort of the energy lost and the energy created in that area and sort of compared it. The energy lost was above the energy that was created by the bomb. And so after doing that, they realized that they were in the clear and they were good to go. But something that was a little nerve wracking was towards higher temperatures, it got very, very close, very, very close to actually imploding. But in reality, it was really, really hard to reach those high temperatures and it would actually take um, a lot of energy to actually reach those, reach those temperatures. So ultimately, they decided to continue forward with the creation of the bomb. Overall, I think this is such a beautiful example to show how strong and powerful math is and how it can we can take something where we're thinking oh no this is wrong and we can use math to kind of predict whether or not we can continue forward with the creation of specific things in science but also as a whole so that is it for this video i really hope you enjoyed it uh and i'm so excited to continue making videos like this and I really enjoyed this because I watched the movie, I loved the movie, and I really wanted to dive deep into the science and math behind it because I'm a nerd. So yeah, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. Thank you for watching.